It does, and I think that you know there was a very important um, uh, lesson that uh, Sir John gave me. I think that when he realized, okay, I was going to go into politics, because he brought me really as a minister of tourism, mm -hmm. and then I think that he realized that, okay, I'm going to be staying in this thing, and he said to me, I'm going to give you one piece of advice. Um, never become accustomed to a lifestyle in politics that or you apps. cannot take you care of yourself. And that's why people Great who, advice. Yeah, people who know me, they'll see, like, when I travel at the airport, you know, I go through immigration and customs, probably a little bit easier than people, so I confess that it's not what it used to be before. But I don't go up to the VIP lounge. I don't, I don't want... Keep it real. Keep it don't real. start to yeah. breathe in that yeah. rarefied air because that is what gets us into danger. It does. And then, you know, and, and that you're going to be... Um, this is not forever. So that's why I always say to people that I, I think of myself as an ant. So if you ever watch ants building an, 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 an <laughs> anthill, yeah. um, and you'll notice that some ants are carrying a little bit more than others, that's... Our, 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 life, our burden in life. But if you take a straw and you suck out 10 or 12 ants, right, what happens is the line just continues. You know, uh, John F. Kennedy, the day after he got shot, the milkman brought the milk, the newspaper came out, you know, people had to go to work, the buses went. Life goes on. And so we should never ever think that we're so indispensable. And always remember that. Um, and that helps, I think, helps confine me in terms of, of getting overly uh, emotional about issues is just to remember at the end of the day, your job is to try to make change. That change may happen in your lifetime, it may not happen in your lifetime. Or you may, uh, like the Berlin Wall, you know, mm -hmm. it took everybody to, to chip off the wall for the wall to come down. And I, and I always remind the people in my party, one person can lose the election because we've seen where constituencies have lost by, by one or two votes. Mm -hmm. But no one person can win the election. Very true. Takes a team. It's a team. I love your lesson. You know, you should actually share that with some other people around the region and around the world. You know, nothing lasts forever. And to remain humble. Tourism, your favorite subject. Let's look at the negatives first, the environment. I mean, there's huge talk about that. So I think, first of all, you have to start at a much higher altitude. Mm -hmm. What has caused the problem in the first place with climate change? is the fact that we have treated emissions as a free good. So it's not been priced into right. the economics, right? So that, that we can emit and there's no cost, right? And, um, we, and we have been doing just that. The world has been doing that. And if the world now has been talking about a carbon tax. So the carbon tax that they're considering, and that's really just a first stab at it, is $75 a ton. So if you take every product and you develop a, a carbon footprint for that product, is that that price needs to go up by $75 a ton on a prorated basis. So a very good example is to say, okay, we're buying tomatoes from Miami, right? If you put a carbon emissions price on that tomato, would it still justify bringing that tomato to San Lucia? And therefore, all of a sudden, my farmer, who has not been competitive, is he now more competitive, okay? The same thing with planes, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of if you're taking a vacation, right. there's a carbon tax and it's just built into that system. The big argument that's going to take place is where is that money going to go? So what we're arguing is, is that the countries that are emitting, it doesn't stay in your hemisphere. Correct. It goes into a global hemisphere. So therefore, it's a, it's a global responsibility to clean up this mess. The next thing that's very important to understand is that the intensity of global warming starts around the equator because that's where it starts getting hotter. Yeah, so it's the whole world is hotter, but it is more hot it's in the equator. And right. while that band is going to grow, simultaneously the intensity around the equator is going to grow. So the, the, the equator will always be warmer than everywhere else. So in fact, when we say that we're on the front, front line of climate change, we are. We are. Definitely on the front line of climate change. And sadly, that there is nothing that we can do to control that. The, the SIDS, or small island developing states, yes. of which there are 39 of them, only emit around a half a percent. So mm -hmm. it means if we all become carbon neutral, we're not going to change the outcome of the world. So the only thing that we can deal with is what we call adaptation. Right. And the question becomes, where is the money going to come from? 
this adaptation. Because building a bridge higher doesn't carry any more cars. Putting your utility wires on the ground is not going to add any additional capacity. So these are sunk costs that we have to put in, um, but in order to avoid the kind of devastation that we saw in the Dominico well, or we saw in an Abaco, mm -hmm. in that life can go on afterwards. Yes. And we're I'm already not. seeing that there are implications in insurance rates already increasing, but at least we're still being insured. They may become a point where the, the, the storms are so frequent, the damage is so great, that you'll become uninsurable because insurance is a balance, right? Because somebody still wants to make money. So there's this risk element to the, mm -hmm. to the whole thing. And so I think that the, the world will become much more conscious of, of global emissions. And I, I mean, I think that uh, the UN General Secretary in particular has done an amazing job of really championing this and getting the world back on track um, since the, uh, the Paris Accord. Right. From a tourism perspective, right. I hear everybody talking about, oh, the end of tourism and this and that. No. That's not true. Um, Manchester Airport did a study, and this was during the days when we had the APD tax. And the, uh, there was more emissions from the cars bringing people to, to the airport to drop off their loved ones and to pick them up than the planes. So, in fact, from a technological perspective, the aviation industry actually has done a much better job in reducing its overall emissions. You know, um, the second largest emitter is cows. I didn't know that one. Yeah. And cows are consuming for the production of meat yes. um, uh, an inordinate amount of water and also land mm. space. All right. And so should we all become vegan? No. I, I am. <laughs> are <laughs> I'm, you a vegan? I'm, I'm, uh, January, I'm going to become a vegan. I mean, and that's my, con my uh, contribution, one, to my own health but also in terms of this okay. whole issue on climate change. And we all have to now recognize that we can't just be out there oh, talking about doing. these things. You you now, you, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. And if, if the changes you're making are not uncomfortable, then there's no change. I've learned that. What's happening in St. Lucia in terms of tourism is it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I've seen, I see some new constructions have gone up. I hear talk of more. Anything that you'd love to share? Yeah, well, you know, um, first of all, I mean, I'm associated to tourism, and, and yes. I, I appreciate that for a very long time. But I wasn't trained to be in tourism. Uh, and I got into tourism because I felt that tourism offered um, St. Lucia and the Caribbean the greatest opportunity for economic growth and wealth um, and, and opportunity. It's something that we had a, a competitive advantage in. And so when you look at the fact that we have not actually put all the things in place um, to continue to to uh, take it uh, to, to strengthen our advantages, and yet we're still growing, tells you how powerful yes. our comparative advantage is. And, and it is that ninety five percent of the people who close their eyes and say where they want to go on vacation think of the Caribbean, and only four and a half percent of them end up in the Caribbean. Interesting. Right. So there's this huge aspiration, and we're not converting on that aspiration. And we is it that we're not converting? That's why they only 4% end Correct. up, actually. We're not helping them fulfill their aspiration. Okay, so and let's start with air travel. Yeah. I mean, air, air travel is a, a critical component mm -hmm. um, to, to being competitive. So the cost of coming to St. Lucia from New York is about over $1,000. The cost of going to New York from Jamaica is four fifty, four hundred dollars The That's cost correct. to go to Cancun is three fifty. Mm -hmm. Right, or even to Europe on a, on a good day if he gets a special flight. Correct. So the the point is is that a couple coming to San Lucia versus going to Jamaica are already going to have to pay twelve hundred dollars more, oh. or that we have to make up for twelve hundred dollars of cost somewhere in the system. We're at thirty six cents a kilowatt hour for electricity, right? So which is uh, a lot of money. Um, our wage rate is higher, and yet it's still too low, mm. right? So where is it that we're going to make up these competitive advantages? And it really is about our product, um, uh, our innovation, and, and creating this desire. So when we came into government, we first of all said to ourselves, what's our potential as a country? Yeah? So I said, okay, uh, what are some of my limitations? If, I, uh, if, if we have full employment in San Lucia, 
is there a possibility of being able to bring more labor into San Lucia? Uh, OECS, CARICOM, other parts of the world, the answer is yes. The, if, in fact, we need more money, and I have all the banks here have led all the money, is there a possibility of getting money from abroad? Well, once there is a, a competitive rate of return on investment, endless amount of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I create more land? And the answer is no. So my limitation will always be on the output of the total amount of land that we have. So what we do is we measure industries um, by output per acre. Mm -hmm. The number of people we employ per acre, because that's, that's the, the, the most important value we have in order to be able to maximize our full potential. 